now that that thumbnail's done, we gonna get into it, okay? Let's check it out, y'all. Oh, I'm on the ground because uh, that's where I like to be. So, how are you going to, how are you going to stand out from your competition? What are some ideas you've thought up in your head that's going to make you a different power washing and window cleaning company than every other window cleaning and power washing company in your area? Because I'm going to tell you right now, you guys all clean windows the same. You all power wash houses the same. You're going to get the same results, give or take a couple guys out there that are probably not. No, they probably don't know what they're doing and they just suck at power washing or they suck at window cleaning and they won't last. But I'm talking about the people that matter. People that are actually doing the correct work. There has to be something that sets you apart because you can't go off. I clean windows the best. I wash houses the best. That don't matter. OK. So I want to show you what my Sunday is consisted of, and it probably took me three hours to do this. This was from the past month. This is the past month. I don't even know if it was a past month. It was probably like the past three weeks. Ugh. I got some. This is a big handful of personal hand wrote letters. I took the time and hand wrote these letters. Um, maybe I had a conversation with a customer about kids. I just had a I just had a kid recently, and we were kind of talking about. I just kind of threw throw something in there. I'm connecting with these customers. I'm remembering the conversations we had. I'm taking notes on my. When I go to a job, I'm taking notes so that I remember what we talked about, um, things that happened, and I touch on that in the letters. Um, but I send these thank you letters. I send them thank you letters. Thank you for leaving the review. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to present our services to you. Thank you for just being you. You're, you rock. Have a great 2018. This little stuff goes a mile. And it, it, it ain't nothing to buy some letters, some postage stamps, and send out some letters. It just takes a little time. But I'm telling you, this right here does volume. Because if you're just going out there and collecting checks from your customers, how far is that going to get you? I mean, yeah, you might provide an awesome service and you might blow their mind and make them happy. But then if you go another step further and send them a nice little letter, oh, they're going to blow, they're going to shit. You know, and I don't have I don't have the money right now to invest in other things where like there's programs out there where they'll send you you can like automate it to send thank you letters automatically and uh, it'll send like gifts and brownies and all sorts of stuff. Oh, you knew guys, I know you don't have the money for that because I don't I'm I'm not really ready to invest in something like that. So I know you guys don't. This is a great alternative. Also with marketing, this is important to listen to. I know nobody's watching right now while this is live, but I'm going to post it because it'll, it'll be good content. So I have this marketing plan in place and it's going to, it's going to be freaking awesome. So one thing you should know when starting door hangers is a good marketing strategy. The thing is with door hangers, they fly off the door, the wind's blowing. So door hangers are kind of, you rarely are hanging door hangers on a door. Anyway, I find myself, cramming it in between the you know sticking it in between the door and the wind and the pane of the door the frame of the door and thanks class uh Klesson. thank you so when you're starting off door hanger try to think how to word this so door hangers are a great way to market your business and get the word out there for cheap but this is something that nobody talks about. Door hangers also suck because they fly off of door handles and you can't always hang them on the doorknob and it's faster to just stick it in between the door and the frame. So what you can do to save money is get postcards made up. Postcards that are the same size as EDDM size. They're actually cheaper than door hangers 
and you take these postcards, get a nice design, and you stick the postcard in between the door and the frame because that's what you'd be doing with the door hangers. And then when you get some extra money and you actually want to send these postcards with EDDM, then you already have the postcards made ready to go. Also, say you want to start getting some bigger commercial jobs. Take the time, invest in a large, like, kind of like the same size as um, computer paper, that size, nice and big, you know, maybe a little paragraph, like front and back, you know, a little introduction about the company, um, the services you offer, some pictures, the services you offer. And so then on the back have the services you offer and then pricing, um, the services you offer, and then a little box where you can put the pricing. So before you go into these commercial buildings, you want you want to write up an estimate. So example, let me use an example. Say you offer window cleaning, surface cleaning, and um, oxidation removal. Say those are the services you offer. So on the on this on this um, flyer that you've had created, you 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 show window cleaning, surface cleaning, oxidation removal, and then an empty box underneath it and you go and you take a look at the building before you walk in and you write in their quote in the box so window cleaning here's the price surface cleaning here's the price oxidation removal here's the price and then maybe at the bottom um, save 15 percent when you pair all these services together or if you pair two or more services together something so then you go in there with this nice big piece of paper basically it's nice heavy duty paper um, it looks nice everything's clean hand it to the first person at the front desk, be like, hey, um, here's an estimate for window cleaning, surface cleaning and oxidation removal. I just wanted to pass this down. Can you just make sure this gets to the right person and then walk out? Because you're not, you don't wanna be in these commercial places bugging people and having the front desk person like radio in people like, uh, hey, can uh, so-and-so come down here? There's someone that wants to talk to him about window cleaning. You're already gonna be pissing people off. They're at work, they're trying to do stuff. So just hand it to them. It'll get to the right person. Tell them, because that's their job. Their job is, uh, and their job description is, if anyone says, give this to so-and-so, you have to give this to so-and-so. So go in there and be like, can you give this to the person who it needs to go to? Even if you don't know their name, just say, can, can you make sure this gets to the right person? Come on, man. This is gold. This is gold, and if you don't think it's gold, you a fool. So, um, yeah, um, I'm excited. These are all marketing methods that I'm in the process of executing right now. I'm only executing door hangers and yard signs and I have to step it up a notch because what, what people have twisted is because work's flying in right now. Work's good. Work's busy, but people have it twisted when work's busy. They're like, oh, work's busy. I don't have to market. And then it slows down and then they start marketing. But you have it ass backwards because now you're marketing when it's a slow time. It's a down period. It's a down point, And nobody's it's down for a reason. It's because it's just the way things work and people aren't really wanting this, wanting these services done right now. Um, so if you can market during this rush and then you have jobs booked out weeks and weeks in advance, now you're prepared and you're covered and you have more of an you know, an insurance, a, a, a stability behind it. So does that make sense? I wish I had more of a following because then I'd have a bunch of you guys on here and you could throw me questions and I could try to answer them. And I don't want to act like a know-it-all, but I'm kind of obsessed with running a small business and uh, I'm confident that everything's going to work out. I know more than I knew last year, that's for sure. So anyone starting off? Um, I'm try what I'm trying to do is create videos and create knowledge and create value instead of the typical theme that seems to be going around on YouTube where it's just hustle. Just hustle your ass off and uh, everything's going to work out and, uh, you know, just, just keep trying. Just... Uh, just, just go out there until just, just wake up at 5 a.m. and don't stop until 9 p.m. Just keep doing it. You have to. 
That's not, that's not realistic. That's not, that's not what builds a business. What builds a business is you have to, okay, like these big million dollar businesses and stuff, they, they're not, they're not out there all day busting their ass. And the CEO is definitely not busting his ass. He has one of the most laid back gigs of them all. And what it is, is creating, creating a system and creating a, creating a business that's, that's that's automated and it's it's doing stuff on its own. So example, um, you need to get a CRM software. That's like it should be like a number one priority. I don't know why more people don't talk about. It. Matter of fact, I know of like YouTube gurus, not really, but like people with. I'm gonna, what do you need? Hang on one second. I'm going to answer that question. So there's people there's people out there on YouTube that are um, claiming they do over $100,000 a year and they're always talking about how they're doing 10 calls a day and blah, 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 and they're using QuickBooks to do estimates. Like, hold on a minute. Come on. So you mean to tell me you're still... There's nothing automated about QuickBooks. Like QuickBooks is nice and it has stuff organized like financially and you don't have to save every single receipt. You can kind of just... You know, but that's that's the craziest thing I ever heard. You have to get a nice CRM software because you know what I might do one day is I might screen share my my CRM software. The problem is so much there's so much confidential stuff on the CRM, so I don't know how I could do like a demo without exposing confidential information. But man, the stuff that uh, I use Customer Factor, the stuff that thing has to offer is so epic. So back to the question. Um, how much money a day do you try to earn? So my goal when I know I'm doing good is $1,000. It's $1,000 a day for one vehicle. Um, and I hit it all the time. I mean, that's, that's like when I know a day is booked when we're around the thousand dollar range, a thousand to 1200, somewhere around there, it's even 1300. Um, I try to book jobs until then. So, I mean, that's kind of my golden rule is for every vehicle I have, I want it to be doing a thousand dollars a day. And that's why I don't have the van out right now. Cause right now I'm having an employee issue and honestly, I'm I'm fine just using the one the one truck. Um, but last year, I thought it was cool that I had two vehicles, <laughs> and I'd take the van and truck with me everywhere. We'd we'd go do a house wash job, and we'd have the van and truck. And it's like we didn't even need it. But like in my head, I was like, "Ooh, this looks so cool. We got multiple vehicles on the road, and blah blah blah." And that's that's not realistic. That's not making a smart move because now I'm insuring a vehicle and I'm paying gas on a vehicle and for what, you know, putting wear and tear in a vehicle for what? So the van's going to sit there until I have two crews. So at least two people in each vehicle. And then once the van's on the road full time, then it'll be $2,000 a day. And then when I get another vehicle, $3,000 a day, that's just how I'm going to keep moving up. It might not be perfect, but, uh, I think that's, you know, I've taken the time to like break down the finances and, uh, how much money I'm going to need. Well, I've broke down the, like the percentages, I guess. So I need a certain percentage for this to make sense and this to make sense. And then, so dude, I, they, um, the pull, the pull cord on my power washer. I don't know what happened, but well, it broke and we replaced it, but I don't know if you guys have ever had it happen. That thing sometimes will yank back at you. It's like the the calibration gets off, and it, I was I pulled it and it pulled me back so hard it like tore something in my hand. So I had to buy one of these, and it's like physical therapy. I'm like trying to re-strengthen my hand. Yeah, that's a good question. So yeah, right now for the, for uh, this last season. Last season, I felt like uh, I felt like there's the, the big sh the big show and um, here. Let me read that question again. 
Do you pay yourself a salary or by the hour? So I pay myself by percentages of each job. Damn it. All right. So what I try to do is pay myself 30% of every job. It's kind of high, but that's, you know, I mean, I don't know if it's high, but I mean, that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing and it's working. So I live off of the 30% of every job. And then I have 40% that goes towards um, employees and business cost. So I have 30% that goes towards me and then 40% goes towards paying employees and investing into the operating cost of the of the operation so fuel um, and equipment and stuff and then i have a percentage that i tuck away for insurance small percent 10 percent for taxes and then it leaves me with like another small percentage for marketing and that's what i'm doing right now it might not be perfect but that's what's working for me so i think that's right yeah so 40, 30, 70, and then I had 30% left over. So 10% insurance, 10% taxes, 10% marketing. And that's what's uh, working for me. So um, last month, yeah, so that's what's working for me. I don't know if that helps. Um, yeah, so, dude, I mean, I just wish, I don't know. So I want to tell you a story. So yesterday, um, actually Friday, we were doing a job and we drove past this, we drove past this house and it's on the corner of kind of a busy street and he had, a, it was said power pressure pros and he had like yard signs up and everything. So it was competition that started up in my area. And I saw him outside and I'm just the type of guy to start yelling at people and, hey. So I said, this is exactly what I said. I said, what up, though? He looked at me like all nervous. And I was like, I was like, you new in this, you new in this area? He's like, yep, just started. And I was like, oh, good for you. Good luck. And then my light turned green and I drove off. So I don't know what, what you guys would do in a situation like that, but. I saw competition and I want to know what this guy's about. So I called him yesterday, Cinco de Mayo. I called him. He said, Hey, you know, I just wanted to talk to you. I saw you uh, are a new business in the area. I'm the owner of Wally's Professional Services. And uh, I noticed you do deck cleaning. And I don't really care too much for deck cleaning. So I wanted to know if maybe you'd be interested in me subcontracting out some jobs to you. And then maybe if you come across window cleaning jobs, you could contract them out to me. I don't know if I really have intentions of doing this, but I just kind of wanted to talk to him and meet him and shoot the shit with him, figure out what he's all about. So he said, yeah, you know, he's all excited. And, uh, and I, I was like, you know I mean? Did you, did you want to meet up? Did you just want to just talk real quick? He's like, sure. I'm pretty sure he was drunk, not to sound racist or uh, stereotypical, but it's Cinco de Mayo and he was Mexican. And actually I know he was drunk cause he said he was, he's like, I'm sorry. It's Cinco de Mayo. I'm enjoying myself. I'm Mexican, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's okay. Um, but we started talking about what he does and how he power washes and stuff. And I quickly found out he doesn't know what the F he's doing. He's just one of those old school power washers that just blasts stuff off and uses like store-bought house wash mix and scrub shit and he's gonna have he's gonna have a bad time okay so um was acting friendly acted nice exchanged info left but it put me at peace of mind because i'm like i don't this i really don't gotta worry too much about this guy and i really you know so he's all over home advisor and probably doing shit super cheap i don't even mess with that stuff um so yeah, that's a good, I, I want, would you guys do something like that? He's, he told me, he told me, he said, you got, he's like, you kind of got balls to just call and like do this. And I was like, not really. I'm just kind of trying to figure out who's in my area. Do you get many jobs that you need to bring your own water? And how would you charge for something like that? 
So yeah, Stefan, um, I honestly don't, and I'm not scared to turn down jabs either. So my setup, I don't know if you see my other videos, but my setup is literally in the back of my truck and I've got, actually I could show you real quick. Truck's right out front. Ugh. My, uh, my girl and my kids are gone for the weekend. So kind of bored and that's why I'm over here doing a live video. So that's my setup. That's my power wash setup. And you can tell that's just a little 35 gallon tank. So needless to say, there's no way in hell I'm bringing water to a job. I don't have a trailer set up with a bunch of water and whatnot. But the uh, even the guys that that do that bring water, well, even the guys that have those big tanks, they're still you know hooking up to a water supply. It's just those are buffer tanks because they have some big dumbass machines. Well, yeah, I mean you can bring water, but basically to sum this up. I am not an expert in that field. <laughs> I don't really take on jobs that don't have water supplies. I've done it before. Um, and I know you can, I know you can actually rent meters from the city and like hook up to fire hydrants and stuff. Um, but then you have to like rent them and I think you have to pay for the water too. But yeah, like bringing your own water to a job. Oh my God, that just sounds like a hassle. And then driving back and forth and like, you don't really know how much water you're going to use. I mean, you could really break down the math, but like, you know, you know, there's just so many factors. And unless you're super experienced in it, I suggest walking away. But that's just my take. You know, other guys might want to take and I've done it. You know, you could always take on the job and just like learn from it. And if you're not scared of like taking the risk, but. Yeah, cool, man. We're kind of getting some people in here. This is fun. This is fun. Yeah, so my uh, my town, my town doesn't have much competition. I'm really taking things over quickly, and I think people are getting envious of it, man. Because the dude, the dude I talked to yesterday was like, he was like, you know, I see you see what you're do doing out here. You really moved up quick. Uh, so what do you want to do? You want to like join forces and take over DeKalb? I'm like, uh, no, I don't need you, fool. Poor bastard. He'll figure it out, though. <laughs> Dude, the thing... <clears throat> the thing that blows my mind is there's people out here power washing and they don't even soft wash. Like, I, I'm assuming most of you guys power wash if you're watching this channel. And I'm assuming you soft wash. But, dude, I couldn't imagine power washing houses. Like, it's like every... Buddy I talk to or like any competition I come around or anyone who does power washing, they've like never heard of soft washing. It's insane. So I'm actually entertaining the idea because I'm actually struggling with my brand. Um, it's Wally's Professional Services, named it after my father. Um, just on a hunch, I had $50 worth of window cleaning equipment and I wanted to get business cards made. And that was the first thing that popped in my head and I made them. And then I created this company really quick because I... Keith Kalfa style was just like running around trying to get window cleaning jobs and like squeegee and shit for like 20 bucks a store. But, um, I got a lot of reviews. I was very adamant about getting reviews. Most of my reviews came from that time and I had like 15 reviews on Google or a bunch of Facebook reviews too. I don't want to lose that and change my brand, but I really, really, really like soft washing. I like window cleaning too, but I really like soft washing and I'm, I'm really good at it and I want to get into roof cleaning, but I don't want to add another service to my business already because I, I don't like the name. So I'm actually thinking about starting another company. Uh, I want to, I want to, I've thought of a good name. I don't want to say it because people are funny and try to steal shit all the time, but I've actually talked with like a marketing designer guy who does this stuff professionally. So yeah, I'm thinking about starting a roof cleaning business, man. Every damn house around me has black roofs, but then I have to like, that's another thing. Don't get twisted. Just because uh, you see a bunch of houses with green or black roofs, don't think you can start a roof cleaning business and become a millionaire because the reason they're all black is because nobody knows about that shit. Nobody cares. And now you got to educate people. So now you have to create like a brief, a very generic, not boring, educational marketing 
to teach people what stuff is and why it is, why the roof's black and why it's not good for the roof to be black. And I power two tips, the black and the pink. Somewhere to soft wash my unit is from water can. Learning out. Yeah, man. So yeah, I, I uh, soft wash with a power washer. I, I mean, I think that's the same thing. I have at least 10 other real soft wash competitors in a 50 mile race. You're lucky you're the only one in the area. Yeah, man. So yeah, I mean, it's really, I'm lucky. I, I'm, I'm lucky and I'm grateful of it. I, I could, I could, I understand the stress of dealing with co competitors, but it's like, it's also what, what can you do to stand out from, I, hold on. Oh yeah. I used to use the black and pink tip my first year and it, I mean, it works, whatever works, but it, yeah, you know, like the competition is one thing, but it's like, you almost got to think how to, how to stand out. I mean, you just got to think how to stand out. So it's like, and it's a lot of a lot of companies don't engage with customers the way you might think they do and the feedback you know it's it's just all about blowing people's minds man it really is and just over delivering over serving and then you can overcharge not overcharge but you can charge them way higher but I'm, I've learned to love it. I mean, it's, I guess it's not for everybody, but I've, I've learned to love it. I love when a customer tries to haggle me or, or tear down the price. And I tell them, look, we're a professional company. My employees are paid living wages and they all have families of their own. We do business a different way. We really offer an elite level of service and it's not for everybody, but all of our pricing is firm. And this is just the cost to do business. It costs a little more, but we find our customers really appreciate having people they can trust in their home or something. You know, it's it's just like um, it's so obvious to me. Yeah, see, Cody Wallace, shit like that wouldn't even really hold on. Shit like that wouldn't really even bother me, like. You're going to have some jag off come around and wash a house for 99 bucks. Like these homeowners know something's fishy, but they're just cheap and they, and they, and they want to go with it, you know, but like the reality is you don't even want people like that doing your house walk or you don't want customers like that. Sorry. My thumb keeps getting in the way. You don't even want customers like that. Cause like, who, I want, I want customers that have their shit together and, and they, and they see the value in the service I'm offering. So, and also if you know anything about business, you know, there's no way in hell you can be, you can survive on $99 a house watch. There's no way in hell. I don't care what part of the country you're from. You can't go out doing house washes for 99 bucks when they take an hour or two and you have the overhead and the insurance and stuff like you're going to, and if it does get so big where the guy is just willing to like do $99 house washes and he's doing 200 house washes a day, and it's going to get so big that the IRS is going to jump in because he can't, he's not paying business insurance and all that stuff. If he's doing house washes that cheap, there's just no fucking way in hell. There's no way. So I'd honestly just wait it out. He'll be gone. Exactly. Exactly. So shit's going to hit the fan one day when he like gets some sh in their uh electrical outlet and catches their whole house on fire or he comes across some uh, aluminum house and fucks it all up it, shit's going to hit the fan for him he's going to get sued and it'll be the end of him you know so all you can do on your end is in your marketing show that you guys are wearing nice you know, poloed shirts, you know, maybe not like on the job working because you're going to fuck everything up. But, you know, like in your marketing, at least some nice clean cut shirts, clean cut hair. Um, I just got my hair cut. My mom cuts hair. So we are actually talking yesterday. I'm going to when I get like these employees situation figured out, I'm going to tell my employees they got free haircuts every week if they want it. It's little shit, man. 
So they got the haircuts. Um, I've created a script that I use when I talk to a customer from the beginning to the end. This is a huge thing that I think a lot of you guys could benefit from if if you don't do it already. So, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna spitball it. So hopefully I get it right. So I go up to a customer's house and I don't just start power washing and then collect a check. It's I, I go up to the house, I say, um, "Hey, Cindy. Hey, I'm uh, John Lang, Wally's Professional Services. We've we've been emailing back and forth because all my stuff's pretty much through email." So I have you down for house washing and window cleaning. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Okay, great. So the way we're going to start is um, I'm going to go through uh, the house, pop out all your screens. I got Scott out there. He's setting up the power washer. Um, we're going to get the house washed, clean the windows, clean the screens, and we'll be out of here in three or four hours. How's that sound? You got any questions? No, no, I think I'm okay. Okay, great. I am gonna. Um, I missed this. I missed this apart. Let me back it up. So okay. So the part where I go, are we gonna do? We're doing a house wash and a window cleaning. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Great. So I got a couple goals here that I want to achieve. Um, one is I want to exceed all of your expectations, and two, I really hope that we can earn a referral or a positive review or both from you after this job is complete. Do you have any questions? You know, and then I start rolling with what I was just saying. No, okay, everything sounds great. Um, I imagine we'll be done in about three or four hours. I'll check in with you about halfway through and make sure everything's looking all right. Check in with them about halfway through. Hey, Sydney, we're about halfway through. Um, everything's looking great on my end. Um, there still is a little bit more to do. Did you have any questions? No, no, everything looks great. Okay, awesome. And then when we're done, I say, all right, Cindy, I've done a final, I've done a walkthrough. Everything looks great. Um, I am human. Would you like to do a walkthrough real quick just to make sure I didn't miss anything? Nine times out of 10, they don't want to do it, which also benefits you because you've asked them if they want to do a walkthrough. So if something if they notice something after you leave, they're way less likely inclined to give you a call because they'll feel like an idiot. Or if they give you a call, they're not mad at you at all. They're like, hey, I'm so sorry. I should have done the walkthrough, but I noticed there was this little spot. Do you think you could fix it? Sure, no problem. It's genius, man. And then you, um, where was I? So you do the walkthrough, you explain, you know, and take notes throughout the process. Say, say you're house washing and you notice a window where uh, some water came in through the window on the, on the inside and it just dripped on the window. You know, make notes of this and then bring it up when you're doing the walk around. I noticed there was, it seems like you either have a window that was open or a seal that's possibly going bad. And I just wanted to bring it to your attention. There's a little water that came in through the house. You know, they love it. They love those little minute um, notes that you've taken. It just shows how much you care. You know, you're not there just to do this job as fast as possible, get the hell out and collect a check. Like, it's, it's not like that. So, um, where was I? So you're doing the walkthrough. Okay. And then here to wrap, to wrap it all up. So Sydney, I wanted to follow up with you. Did we meet our, our initial goals? Did, did, did I to be uh, meet and exceed all your expectations? Oh my God. Yes. The house looks great. I'm so happy. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then awesome. Would you mind doing me a favor? We're a small family-owned business. We're uh, we're new in the area, and we're really trying to make a name for ourselves. Would you mind telling your friends and family about us and leaving a positive review on Google? Um, I could even send you. Yeah, would you mind leaving us a positive review on Google? Sure, no problem. And then when you send them an invoice or the receipt, it's in the it's in the email too with a link going straight to Google to leave a review in case they didn't do it yet. So then it's boom in their face again. And then you follow up with them, say the same shit over again. Did we meet all your expectations? Would you mind leaving a positive review or something on Google for us? It really goes a long way. Then send them a thank you card. I don't usually put it in the thank you card. I just say thanks, but 
oh, dude, you do stuff like that, then these low ballers are like irrelevant. It's like, it's like comical. It's like, I'm not competing with that. They're, they're not even in the same ballpark. It's like, it's like, um, it'd be like a car dealer. It'd be like a Lamborghini car dealer getting mad that he lost a customer to the red tag motors down the street. Like he don't care about that red tag motors down the street customer. All he cares about is them high dollar prime, super cool customers that are, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? You know what I'm trying to say? Thank you, man. Thank you. So, yeah, man. You'll be all right. Screw them uh, splash and dashers, man. What else can we talk about? You guys smoke on the job? Do you smoke cigarettes on the job? You shouldn't. Looks trashy. Looks like shit. You should quit smoking. Maybe get an e-cig. You got, you're, you're trying to get customers that, that earn over $100,000 a year, you know? What about washing cars? Like you're saying, do you wash your own vehicles? So you have clean vehicles when you come up or talking about a car washing business? Here's a question for everyone watching. You can re you can type something in or not. Where where is your business at right now? How, what how, what season is this for your business? Where are you at in equipment and supplies? And and what what's what's something you're struggling with? Where do you where are you trying to get? What's the goals here? And why are you not reaching them? So you wash cars in a grocery store parking lot for $20 a car. I mean, what do you use? Do you use a power washer and just kind of clean them up? I mean, I if you're doing the right technique and using the right soaps, I'm sure it's profitable because I've seen guys charging 20 bucks for a garbage truck to clean garbage trucks and fleet wash and stuff, like fleet washing. So... I guess my question is, why are people paying $20 for a car wash? No, I was just saying that's an idea. I personally run a bread route. Yeah, so I guess I'd be I'd be wondering why people would pay $20 for a car wash in a grocery store parking lot when they could pay less at an actual car wash. That's just where my head went. You have to be one badass grocery store car washer guy, man. Look at my hand. I'm left-handed, so my hand drags on all the ink. I was, look at that. That just proves I was handwriting personal-ass letters to all my clients. Would y'all do something like that? Because you got to. You got to if you have this millionaire vision like me. So yeah, it seems like soft washing and uh, these power washing businesses are are they thrive way more in the south than they do up north. But it's not to say it's not a profitable business up north. I'm in Illinois, and I know there's big ass, big dumbass businesses in Michigan and Wisconsin and New York and stuff. So go on and hit me with it, Cody. You're the only guy talking on here anyway, so it's not like I'm doing anything better. Do I go through a local insurance company for my business insurance? So the way my insurance works is I actually, um, there's a bank in Illinois called Resource Bank, and I don't think it's actually a bank in any other state. 
but they're a big bang in Illinois and they're awesome. But, uh, they offer insurance for like business car. Like they don't offer it, but what they do, I forget what the term is an insurance. So he, 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 the insurance guy has contact with tons of insurance agents and companies. And I tell him what I'm, what I got going on, what I need insurance for. Um, and he tries to find me the cheapest rate. I had a dirt cheap rate. And then my, for whatever reason, my credit, they, they, they saw my credit score and they're like, yeah, his credit score is too low for us to cover him. Somehow that matters. But now I have to pay a little more, but I actually need to upgrade my insurance to a way higher policy with more coverage because things are getting bigger and we're getting bigger jobs. And uh, the, my insurance policy right now is just not going to cut it. So if you have to, don't let having insurance scare you. Insurance is not a big deal. I pay, I pay like a hundred bucks a month, almost a hundred bucks a month for a real low coverage policy. But I also have shit credit. I could have probably had the same exact policy for half the price if my credit wasn't so bad. But uh, I don't pay all at once. And I guess so since I make monthly payments, somehow that matters. But um, yeah, so I got a real low coverage but it's enough to say I have insurance. Like I do have insurance there, you know, people are covered in case of an injury, but so I'm, I'm legal, but it's just not the best coverage. And it, it actually is starting to get in the way of me getting larger commercial jobs. So it depends on what you're um, seeking residential, just get something that'll make you legal. I want to build a power washer. I don't have any business started up yet, but I will want to. Would you get a cat 2700? I have one mil on my bread. So, Cody, you just deliver bread? You bake bread and deliver it or something? Because that's one badass hustle. That is some straight up grind mode shit, dog. That's awesome. But no, man, it, I mean, personally, I would not go with a two and a half gallon. Four gallon per minute is the lowest I'd go. I'm actually looking to upgrade to a five and a half gallon. Um, a two and a half gallon, you're just not going to reach the peaks you're going to need to reach. No, I own a distribution ship through Sara Lee. Oh, wow. Well, damn, why don't you got the money to make a power washer, man? It sounds like a big gig. Unless it just sounds more important that it is but distribution of sarah lee sounds pretty exquisite sounds pretty legit <clears throat> i think a one million dollar policy is good you guys would laugh if you knew what my policy was it's not even it's not shit it's bad it's really bad i actually need to do that i'm gonna do that I'm going to do that tomorrow. We got one little window cleaning job tomorrow. And I'm going to take care of my insurance situation tomorrow. Hi, Erie Insurance for Pressure Washers is 54 a month here in Virginia. It covers residential and commercial for up to $1 million. That's bad ass. That's the most badass thing I've read all day. See, if I was to pay that much, I'd probably I'd be lucky to get three hundred thousand dollars a month, or three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, that's crazy. I wonder if it's just a, if it changes statewide. But if I wanted something like that, I'd be paying way more. I pay. I'm just gonna tell you because I don't care. I, I pay. Uh, I pay over a little over a hundred a month. And I only had like 300,000 or no, it's $600,000 in coverage. Can I explain what an unloader is? So the unloader is why the unloader is a part on the power washer, man. I don't know what it does. It unloads things. No, I'm just kidding. What, what, what my question is, is why are you trying to build one? What's the, cause you're not, I don't, I really don't think you're going to save any money trying to build it each piece by pump, by pump, by pump, you know, or 
each piece of the pump. Okay, well, Mr. Cody Wallace, here's one thing you gotta learn with business, my brother. Being frugal is gonna be your enemy because you have to think pumps 450, motor 350. Right. I, I might send you, if I could, if I could look online, if I could look online and do the power washer I'm using, I got a pressure power pressure pro. Damn it. Power washers direct something like that online. And it was like a thousand bucks. It's the Simpson four gallon per minute, 4,200 PSI direct drive pump. It's a shit pump, but it comes with a two year warranty on it. So I beat the shit out of my pump last year, blew it up at the end of the season. They sent me a brand new one. So I started my, my new season with a brand new pump and that thing's still going strong, made so much money with it. Like just get something cheap that works that you can do, do the job. And then when you start getting busy and booming and you got all this money, then buy yourself a nicer power washer and pump. But the thing you're going to do is you're going to be all cheap and frugal and try to part everything out and buy buy everything and, and try to save yourself a hundred bucks or something, which I really don't think you even would. And then think about all the time you're investing to put this together. You might think it's fun to put stuff together and build it, but all that time you could be using to market, do door hangers, practice using your power washer. Um, you'll learn real quick. I, I, I tried to buy a shit trailer and rebuild it last year. I said, fuck it. And I sold the whole thing. There was a bunch of things I tried to save money on. And it was the worst idea ever. So make an investment. You, you got to calculate how much time you're going to waste by trying to save money. $699 for a form is, is badass though. Yeah. I mean, it's your rodeo brother. Do what you got to do. But my guess is you're going to get the pump without the unloader and downstream injector. So you're going to have to spend more money on that. And with tax and shipping, you're going to be right around a thousand dollars when you could have just bought a whole unit for around a thousand dollars. So I would, I missed what uh, this one guy said. I would pay a hundred dollars a month if I include roof cleaning, which I don't. Yeah. So uh, Dero, Dero, I can't pronounce your name. What's stopping you from doing roof cleaning? Because I, for me, it's tempting as hell to do roof cleaning. I think I would really like to do roof cleaning. Experience. Yeah, but I mean, it's like, yeah, I can respect that. Soft washing is dangerous. Last year, I'm blessed to be not, not sued and under underground right now, but I, I almost set like three houses on fire last year, just being unexperienced. Um, I There was a couple of times I washed aluminum siding when I damn Noel shouldn't have washed aluminum siding. Um, and also when you wash aluminum siding, so SH is super conducting, super, super, super conductive electri of electricity. So realistically, you should tape off all the outlets and electrical outlets, especially if it's an older house, because a lot of the times that electricity stuff is not up to code, or even if it is up to code, some of that SH gets in the um, CFID socket. There's an actual term for it. I don't know why I keep trying to say it. It's bugging me, but the electrical sockets, man, the things you put plugs in. So the ones on the outside, that SH gets in there, it can pop them. Yeah, there you go. GFI, there's another letter in it though. It's not just GFI. Maybe it is, I could be wrong. But uh, it's super conductive, GFCI. Thank you, mine. appreciate you. So it's super conductive, right? So you can get that SH in there and then all of a sudden you see black smoke bellowing out of the sockets and this thing's in the wall. So you're like, oh shit, you think there's like a fire in the wall and it's like burning insulation and stuff, which it very well could. Luckily, all the times it happened to me, it never did. And 
I just replaced the outlet. It happened to me. It happened to me twice. I can remember for sure, but something's making me think I did it again. But uh, scary stuff. The one time it happened on a older vinyl home is one of my first house washes. It was a mess. I had to take. I had to go back to the house like three or four different times because I wasn't putting the right mix down. I found out the hard way that upgrading my hose length means my downstream injector wouldn't work. So I had to get a new downstream injector and then I was trying to use an X jet. And anyway, I put on a really strong mix and he had a pool, a pond plugged into the outlet or something. Or also um, when things are um, wired weird, sometimes light switches so you could turn a light switch on and then for some reason it connect it controls the power of the outlet so you turn a light switch on now the outlet's like live and it's just poor like you just don't know poor some people are poor electricians and fuck shit up it's dangerous stuff house washing isn't just as simple as some guys make it sound You're, you can really f shit up sometimes do you do driveways and what's an average price for that yeah, so surface cleaning is, eh, I don't really care about it, but uh, I, t I typically just price it high because I don't think it's that profitable. So I do like 150 200 for a driveway, and I only do it if they're getting another service. So when I'm busting out my power washer, I kind of have a mental minimum of $329. That's for house washing because I don't want to bust all that out and unroll it and do all that unless I'm at least getting my 329 because I, my goal is to do 160 an hour when the power washer's on. But if I already got it un, all undone and all the hoses are unraveled and mix is made and everything, it ain't shit to hook up the surface cleaner and surface clean the driveway for an extra 150, 200 bucks. But, you know, if they just want like a little square patio done or a little walkway, I just do like a hundred bucks. But uh, it's only, only if they're doing a minimum amount of service already. Do you do anything special around power lines coming into a house? Nah. No, I don't. No, I really don't have a problem with soft washing and electrical shit blowing up and stuff. Um, I think that the occasions that happened to me was honestly faulty wiring because they were both older homes. Um, I replaced the sockets. I went to the store, just got new ones and swapped them out. But I, I'm convinced there was something wrong with their electrical and, and why it happened. But never all. Whoa. Man, I lost everybody. Let's see if they come back. phone dad my phone dad <clears throat> I still got a few minutes if you all want to keep doing this Isn't that a bummer the phone died I forgot what I was even talking about hmm well, chances are people aren't going to come back. They got their lives to live. It's Sunday. In summary, I noticed uh, this guy at the end, Cody Waller, said bank and ancha. Don't get it twisted, man. Sounds like these jobs are priced very high and they're making all this money and... It's a busy time of the year, and things are good right now, but it'll die down, and August, everything dies down, and that's three months away, and it's always a race against time, and I'm kind of panicking, honestly, because we got winter coming up, so 
don't um don't look at like what other people are doing and like compare and be like damn they're just crushing it and they're they got it all figured out and i can't wait to be like the there's a lot of like fakes i think there's a lot of fake people on youtube claiming to be busier and doing bigger things than they are and um just know you're crushing it you're ahead you're already way ahead of the game if you're watching videos like this and you're searching youtube and you're trying to like educate yourself on being an entrepreneur and starting a service business starting your own business there has never been a better time in the world to start your own business like you're light years ahead of anyone around you because you see there's an opportunity to create a better life for yourself and your family and you want it and you're you're learning how to do that so <clears throat> just keep with it it's gonna get tough there's always gonna be hard times there's always gonna be rough patches there might be times where you have to go get a full-time job to make ends meet and then go back into business you know it's a seasonal business so it's kind of hard to like survive during the off season when you're just starting so give yourself a pat on the back for even entertaining this entrepreneur idea because it's terrifying to drop what you got going on to start a business it's less terrifying for me because i had nothing when i started this business i don't want to be that guy who was like i started my business homeless as shit i was waving a homeless sign and all of a sudden, I had this epiphany to start a business, and now I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> but that kind of was me. So, y'all got this. Y'all got this. And don't, don't fuck up your hand, man, or else you'll be squeezing things, trying to gain your hand strength back. But at least I got this heavy-ass gold, man. this house dog that's what I'm working towards getting out of this little apartment saving up my money getting a nice town home for the family do I spray water on shrubs and stuff before using sh absolutely it is a must a must a must a must yeah so you gotta you gotta wash wet that house down wet down the shrubs around it wet down the little fence around it. I usually try to like wet like the area I'm washing, like the wall. This, so the, uh, the side of the house I'm washing, I wet it down and then six feet around everything of the wall. Up, down, so it's a good rule of thumb. It's a good rule of thumb. But yeah, dude, uh, so, so you want to start a power wash business, you have no clients, you don't even know how to soft wash, you don't have a power washer, what's the next move? What, what would be your next move? The answer for me would be get a power washer and practice soft washing you don't have to you don't have to like find houses with green stuff to practice on it four thousand in the hole on a setup damn damn four thousand in the hole on a setup you're 4,000 in the hole. So you're 4,000 in the hole on a power wash setup and you still don't have a power washer? I like talking to Cody. He's not afraid to type. You 
don't need no hot water, bro. I think you're overdoing it. I think you're over preparing, man. Don't forget humble beginnings. Just get what you need to get. No, you don't need all that. I think you're I think you're uh I think you're trolling me now. You're either trolling me or you genuinely think that. Because seriously, you don't need no hot water unless you're uh, doing a bunch of commercial properties, surface cleaning. It's like the only time you could benefit from a hot water. That's nice. Damn, looks like I got everyone back, pretty much. <clears throat> when do you think you'll upgrade your truck? Oh, dude, I'm, I'm running that thing until the wheels fall off. That was the best investment I ever made. I got that truck at an auction. At a J.J. Kane auction. I don't know. They, they're all over the country, so you can Google them. J.J. Kane auction. And they're old, like, Nikor and ComEd trucks. So they're actually, the majority of them are taken, taken care of pretty well. Um, and I was bidding on a truck, another truck that I wanted. I didn't even look at this truck. Like, you can look at the trucks before you bid on them, and then the bidding starts. And I didn't even look at the truck that I bought, and it was sitting there with two flat tires in the front. Two flat tires. I never started it. The battery's dead. And I bid on it, and I got it for eighteen hundred. And I was like, oh, like I didn't. That was my only eighteen hundred bucks. And I didn't have. I didn't even check out the truck. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know if it ran or anything. It didn't even start. <clears throat> but luckily, I filled the tires up. They held air, and we jumped it. the The auction people jumped it for me. It started. It was quiet as hell. Ran great. The, the only thing wrong with it was the oil pressure sensor valve was broken. It was just the valve. So I replaced the valve, and then the oil pressure was right in the middle where it was supposed to be. Dude, that was an intense moment in my life. I was like, oh, my God, I just fucked my whole life up. No, but, uh, dude, that truck's made me more money. than. So then what I did is I worked at a tree service when I bought that truck, and he sold fire. He, he had a bunch of firewood, and he gave me a deal on the firewood. He gave me the firewood for like 50 bucks a face cord, and then I would come home and sell it in my town for 100 to 120 a face cord. And I did that every day at work. I would post ads saying firewood for sale, and every day I had a customer. So I'd go to work Monday through Friday, and I'd come home with a face cord. I'd make an extra 50 bucks every day. Always got to be hustling. Always got to be thinking of how to make some money, man. That's where my brain's at. Always, 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 money, money. But, dude, it's just, the internet's just a crazy tool. It's a crazy tool. I started this YouTube channel because I've learned everything I've learned from the internet pretty much. Um, but with that being said, be careful who you get advice from. Even me, take everything I say with a grain of salt. I'm not an expert in everything. I've learned from my own mistakes and stuff. So, there's a lot of guys out there that act like they know it all and they're these gurus, but they ain't out shit, man. They're just in the forum. They're in a forum with fucking, with, with Cheetos all over the fingers, fingers typing, typing you advice. <laughs> started the business at the end of last season. Jeez, I'm having a hard time getting business. How do you seem to get your customers? Well, you seem to know your shit. I do know my shit, but, you know, I'm, I'll be the first to admit there's a lot of stuff I don't know. So, I started my business at the end of last season. I'm having a hard time getting business. How do you seem to get your customers? So, Danny, I had the same problem last year. Problem was, I was not hustling like I thought I was. So, and I'm not accusing you of this, but when I, when I started last year, my mindset was I posted some Facebook ads, I did some door hangers, you know, but I wasn't diving into it. You can't do like 
a uh, couple hundred door hangers and be like, all right, where's the jobs? Where's the jobs? I've done my door hangers. Where's the jobs? You got to do door hangers like over and over a bunch and a bunch and a bunch. And you know, you'll get results. But I would, I would do these little bursts of marketing and I felt like I was making a difference. And then I'd wake up, you know, at like eight or 9 AM and like just lounge around all day because I didn't have jobs or I'd take the day off and I'd do stuff. And if you're not, if, if you're not working, how do I word this? You can't just put in like 20, 30 hours a week and then complain of not having jobs. Like you have to be trying to get jobs every day of the week. So Monday through Friday, your schedule is wake up at 6 a.m., get your coffee, watch your news, do whatever the hell you got to do. Uh, maybe check online and fix or tweak some Facebook post or, or, or edit your Google My Business thing. Maybe make some Google post or do something, you, you know, try to try to focus on the free things you can do if you're low on money. And then maybe out the door by eight. So there's always stuff that needs to be done when you have a business. Maybe the, the truck needs to be organized or things need to be cleaned up or you need to do an inventory checklist on what's some stuff you need or something's got to be clean. So, something's got to be done. And uh, so then you're out the door by eight and you're out there shaking hands and talking to people and um, you know, for me, I was window cleaning, so I was going into all these little businesses trying to sell window cleaning and um, maybe talk to the, the 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 chamber of commerce in your town. You know, that's something I still got to do that I, I kind of been putting off. Um, or go out and do door hangers. I mean, if you're not trying to get work during a working hour day, that's why you don't have work. I mean, work's never going to just come up on your lap. I have a badass website, number one rated. Um, I got everything going for me where, like, a, a new business owner would think, oh, the work must just fall on his lap. I still got to market, man. If I don't market, it's all, it'll all fall apart, you know. You got to, like, stay in people's face and remind them they need their windows cleaned and power washed and stuff. It's the best advice I can give. There's really not no magical answer. It's uh, it's it's really something almost you know deep down. If you're really giving it 110, percent if you if you have days that you're if you have days where you're doing nothing all day, then you're, then that's why you don't have jobs. <clears throat> but uh, yeah. So I'm not even focusing on a new truck. It's. What my focus is, is getting some solid employees and getting my van and my truck on the road at the same time. But I'm telling you right now, a big fancy truck with a vinyl wrap is not going to get me business. It wouldn't be worth the investment. So, yeah, I hope that helped, Danny. I don't know if, I don't know if, uh, what makes soft washing different than just regular pressure washing? Well... You really want me to explain it? Um, okay. So soft washing, it's kind of what I explain to my customers. Soft washing is the manufacture. I, I tell them we actually do use the vinyls manufacturer recommended methods of cleaning. So we use a soft pressure, no more than um, no more than a garden hose pressure. And we wash your siding with chemicals that actually kill the underlying root system of algae and kill off all that mold and dirt and grime and wash everything clean. It brightens everything up. Um, you know, the difference is this is like an alternative to power washing. When you have a power washer come through, 
if they are using that pressure on your siding, they're damaging your home. They're removing that protective barrier on your vinyl and they're forcing water behind your siding, causing unseen mold growth and future problems. So if you want a proper way, if that's the proper way you want, if you want your house clean the proper way, you would want it soft wash. And power washing, pressure washing is really more so for, my opinion, surface cleaning, concrete cleaning, and stuff where you have to use a little more pressure. I've really never came across an instance where you should use a red tip, and you should never use a red tip on concrete, because concrete is actually porous, and you can ruin it and etch it. What makes the pressure washer convert to soft? Okay, that's a good question. So, the reason why we use a power washer, why I use a power washer and still call it soft washing, because the only tip I use is, I guess, what's equivalent to the black tip. I have different special, I have like soft wash tips, but <clears throat> it's all generally the same flow. I actually have something I can show you. Never mind. Yeah, so the J-Rod. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's. I'm using the power washer, but there's no pressure coming out of the power washer. It's just the, the really light applicating pressure. Um, but that's the volume. That's where the gallons per minute comes in handy. So when I'm using the black tip or the J-Rod, I'm getting four gallons per minute. of just volume. I don't care about the pressure at all. I would rather have a five and a half gallon per minute pump with 2,500 PSI rather than four gallons per minute, 4,200 PSI, because I'm not using that much pressure. Um, so yeah, it doesn't convert, but it's, it's the tips you use. If you need that pressure, then I guess you can use the power washer or change the tips, but. Let me read what you said. And then I, I'm, I'm going to answer your question, Nick, in a second. Let me just get this figured out. So the pump is off at that point, or is that not? At, okay. No, the pump's fully on. The, the fuel, or the, the throttle is fully on. Everything's fully open. You never want to run the power washer without that, without it fully opened up. Um, but yeah, when you use the right, when you use the soap tip, there's no pr there's no pressure. It's just, and then that's why you can also draw a chemical because it's more water coming through than just focused pressure, like you know. So when you if you were to like change the tip to high pressure, like a white tip or something, and you were trying to downstream, it wouldn't even work because it's not pulling as much water. So. I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Let me answer Nick's question real quick. I mentioned in the last video's comment, inch and a half hose works great to eliminate pump. May be able to get away with inch hose without any 90 degree fittings. So yeah, Nick, uh, it's funny you mentioned that last year, my power washer, um, I had it on a trailer and I had the same pump on there and I didn't use a pump and I was drawing water just fine. But for whatever reason, I set it up this year and it wasn't drawing water. So I think it's really just hit or miss. Um, I also think it had to do with the elevation. I think my on the trailer, I had the tank up higher than it is now. And it caused like a gravity type of feed, if that makes sense. But now the feed is so long and kind of wind. The, it's better for the pump, the power washer. Because a direct drive is really not meant for it. But I know what you're saying. If you use a large orifice hose, it makes it easier for that pump to pull it. But it's, you know, it's. I think it also has a lot to do with the positioning of the tank. If the tank's higher up than the pump, then it causes a gravity feed. Because it still needs some type of feed. And I know if you have a um, belt-driven pump, and you use a real, real big hose like that, you can actually increase your gallons per minute on the pump because that machine's able to pull so much water. So you might have like an eight gallon per minute pump, and you, if you use a big enough hose, you could get potentially like 10 gallons per minute out of it. But I don't know. 
I hope one day I'll have an eight gallon per minute and I can experiment with it, but I see I see a lot of issues with that. I see it pulling almost too much water and it being a clusterfuck of trying to keep water in a buffer tank and all that. I see it being a, a, a headache, but it might like be almost too much. I'm gonna try the five and a half gallon per minute machine and see how that does. I'm probably gonna be ordering a pump here within the next month, maybe. Maybe, I don't wanna commit to that. Do you need a buffer tank with your setup, or can the hose faucet provide you four gallons per minute? So yeah, the hose can do it. I used to not run a buffer tank, but I started running. Um, last year I didn't run into this issue, really at all, I don't think, but this year I, I came across some houses with a uh, low flow, and I needed that buffer tank, because the flow was so low it wasn't feeding the machine. How's your supply hose reel working out, and who makes it? Supply hose reel. So you're talking about the garden hose reel? I don't know who made it, because I found it on the side of the road. It's working out all right. It's a piece of shit, but it works out. Um, but yeah, man, it's it's nice. I'm glad I got it, because I used to not use my hose reel. So can I buy a specific soft washing handle from my power washer? I have a four gallon per minute now. No. No, you wouldn't buy a you wouldn't buy a soft washing handle because they're built cheap and flimsy because they're really only for um, soft washing pumps, I guess, or you know those electric pumps. But yeah, I, I don't know if you meant that or not, but yeah, you would still use a power wash handle and then the nozzle, the tip, you would just get the soap tips. It doesn't have to be like a J rod. You can just get soap tips you know tractor supply had a deal on them for 80 bucks you inspired me to get one and steal your bolt-on setup bolt-on setup i don't know what bolt-on setup you're taking i don't know what i bolt on. oh are you talking about the whole the no that's not me yeah i don't know is there a better tip than the ladder saver Oh, you're talking about, like, the reel? The little reel I did? Is there a better tip that the ladder saver to soft wash? Two-story homes? This is the one I use, but I'm not very good at it. Yeah, man, I never heard of the ladder saver. You're welcome, Vincent. Thanks for, thanks for thanking me. Um... Yeah, I never heard of the ladder saver. So I use a J-Rod. Um, man, I want to show you this thing. I actually got it at Walmart, and it's badass. It's a good, cheap alternative that gives you very, very, very similar results to to um, a J-Rod or an X-Jet downstream injector thing. I got to find it because it's going to... It's gonna drive me nuts if I don't show you guys. <clears throat> Pretty sure it's in the garage. If I don't find it in a second, I'll stop. I'll stop running around. Ah, here it is. Here it is. Are you? Ready. Dun, dun. So yeah, take a mental image of that. It's blue. It's uh, blue, yeah, it's blue. Turbo nozzle. So this says pressure washer adjustable soap nozzle. Got it right at Walmart. Short range soap or long range soap up to 30 feet. So all it does is twist. That's all you need the whole time you're washing the house. It's just this. And this is equivalent to using a black tip or a pink tip you would buy on Amazon. I remember when I was talking about using pink tips last year on this forum. And this like this guy on there that like was convinced he knew everything. It was like Dude, you're such a noob. 
the f the fact that you're using a red a faded red tip and you think it's a special nozzle just shows you're a noob and you should quit while you're ahead. And I was like, uh, dude, there is a pink tip and it's for two stories uh, soap applications. Uh, they just don't come with the machine. It's funny. Can you quick connect it to the gun without the wand? So, the, the little gun I have that's just like a pistol grip with no wand, I had to buy a special, I had to buy a couple fittings to make that happen. So, you still got to buy a couple fittings to make that possible. Speaking of JRs, I got a quarter inch quick connect for the tip of the trigger gun. It's too thick to fit on the inner two fittings. J-Rod, if you encountered that problem. I gotta read that again. I got a quarter inch quick connect for the tip of the trigger gun. It is too thick to fit on the inner two fittings of the chain. Yeah, no, I haven't. I don't know if you just got the wrong size or something, maybe? Because don't the tips for the J-Rod just screw in? Don't you don't you screw them in? It's not really a quick connect when it comes to the J rod. It fits the outside tips, not the inner two. That's weird. So you're si so you're saying the female ends of the J rod are different sizes? Because if it fits on the two outside, it should fit on the inside. Because they're all the same. They, they all the same size tips. They all screw on the same. Hey, thanks, Jason. Appreciate you. How's business going, man? I haven't talked to you in, since the beginning. Since the beginning of the season. The tips screw into J-Rod, but the J-Rod makes our... But the J-Rod makes a quarter. Watching from Canada. Awesome. Yeah, Nick, I, I think I'm having a hard time picturing in my head what you're trying to get at. The tips screw on the J-Rod, but the J-Rod males are too close together. I almost want to get my J-Rod so I can... Yeah, man, I think it's just, a. Uh, it's got to be just the wrong sizes or something, man. That's weird. See, I, I bought my J-Rod as like one whole piece, so I didn't really have to deal with getting different pieces and screwing them in and stuff. But yeah, like what Sean said with the 3 8 I'm just, I'm just shooting blanks, man. I don't know exactly what, how to answer your question. I, I'm, I think I'm having a hard time understanding exactly the problem. How do you price your jobs? By the square foot or do you have a set price to go by? Yeah, man, I, I think the square foot thing is just too much. It's just too too technical. Plus, I feel like you have the issue when you start getting a lot of customers. Like, you'd be surprised how many people have no idea how much square foot their house is or how many square feet their house is. I'm running that problem all the freaking time, and it kind of blows my mind. But um, yeah, man, I kind of just have a set price. So in my area, at least, I have a lot of, there's a lot of like, I call them cookie cutter neighborhoods. And it's a lot of homes where they're all like very similar in size. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, D. Riley. You could definitely do all that if you want to. I think the square footage is a little, just a little much. I don't, I don't think it even necessarily matters about square footage because sometimes you might have a house... I guess it all depends on your location too. Houses are different all over. My, in my area, there's a lot of neighborhoods where there's like cookie cutter homes and they're all like the same general size, two to 3,000 square foot or something like that. And I just give them set prices, 329 for a one story, 369 for a two story. And then if we're getting into bigger neighborhoods where we come across like 5,000 or over 3,000 square foot homes, then yeah, their price is gonna be adjusted a little bit. I usually bump it up to 449 once we start getting bigger than the standard homes. Or if the home is on a slant, a lot there's a common theme in my area where 
um, the front of the home looks like a two story and then the back dips down on like a hill and it turns into a three story. That's like a common thing in my area. And I priced them uh, at like almost 500 bucks for a house wash. What do you think about roof wash? I think roof washing is sweet. I don't do it. I want to do it. I know I'd be badass at it and I know I'd make a lot of houses look good around here. The thing is soft washing, man, once you like get into this and you really do it, you really start to appreciate the, I don't know, you, you get a little more confident. Like, you know, like this stuff, common people don't know this stuff. Like common people don't know how to, they don't, they don't know to mix house wash blend and how to do this real quick. Just put on some house wash mix and rinse it off and make things look better than ever nobody's going to get those kind of results. So once you start understanding how soft washing really works and you're really confident with mix and you're confident that you're not going to kill a bunch of stuff and ruin stuff, um, you get confident in your pricing. You're like, dude, I'm, I can do this. It's a tough job. And you kind of, I, I almost kind of price things. The way I price it is I almost look at it and I'm like, that would be really hard for them to do. It'd be easy for me to do, but that's irrelevant. It was a really hard thing for them to do. So the value in getting that done is higher because they can't even do it if they wanted to. So I can price it different. It's kind of how it goes. I might not necessarily... Yeah, I don't know. I think that explains it well enough. So yeah, roof washing is badass. I really want to get into it. I want to make like a legit soft wash setup. I would never use a power washer. And that's the difference between a soft wash setup and a power washer. Power washer, you can use it for house washing because you can hit it with a weaker mix. The power washer dilutes it like nine to one, I think. So you make a mix of like half and half, um, two gallons water, two gallons SH, your surfactant, and then you downstream it. So it's nine to one. So it's diluting that already diluted mix nine to one. With roof washing, you need to hit it, like, way stronger. Yeah. So, yeah, roof roof washing is, you need a stronger mix. So you need the soft wash because those pumps will pull the exact chemical that you mix. So, for example, like a roof wash, you might do a fourth of it SH and the rest of it water. So it seems like you're making a wick, weaker mix, but you're pulling that chem straight onto the roof instead of diluting it with the water that the power washer is shooting, if that makes sense. So I want to get a solid soft wash setup, which I'm looking to invest, but I'm, I'm, also, I'm looking to create a whole new business, a whole new roof cleaning business, and just make it two, run two businesses. I know it's a daunting task, but I think that's what has to happen. How do you get up to the third story with mix? Well, you try to shoot it up there. Up so, man, get a trailer and do it all. That's the problem though. When you start offering too many services, which I do, I offer window cleaning, power washing, and gutter cleaning. It looks better when you are People don't want to call someone who's like, like if I call a exterminator, I don't want to call an exterminator slash painter, you know, or an exterminator slash landscaper. You know what I'm saying? So I really, I'm a firm believer in offering three services max, and then you can kind of branch off of it. And some people might argue that you can incorporate roof and power washing in one, but honestly, I have a very weak brand. I mean, we're, I'm probably the most popular company in my area, but I also have like no competition. So, which blows my mind because I hear a lot about you guys struggling with competition in your area. And I'm in a very busy town with a lot of very, very nice houses. Not very, very nice, but there's people making over $100,000 a year. I check it on the EDDM map where you can, 
you can mail mail to specific people with specific incomes. There's a lot of areas where they make over 100000 a year. It just blows my mind. There's really not much competition. But I want to fix my brand. I want to create a whole new brand. And I don't, I don't think I'm ready to change my existing brand. But I could see me starting a whole new business and applying what I know now into that business. And it would take off pretty, pretty solid. Yeah, good, good uh, term there, Cody Wallace, Jack of all trades, master of none. So, how do you get your mix up? To the, how do you get up to the third story with mix? It's a good question. It depends. There's some jobs where you, you, might have to get a lift, which jacks the price up. I remember last year, I charged a lady. It was over a thousand dollars just to do oxidation removal on her gutters, just oxidation removal with a lift, and blew my mind. And she paid over a thousand dollars for window cleaning. It was a brick home. That was a big job, but people pay money for stuff, man. Extension pole, no. I won't buy one of them. I won't buy one of them uh, things. Those uh, telescopic things, I just hear bad things about them and they're heavy and hard to work with. A lot of competition where I live. I have another company taking my signs down off of the poles. Yeah, what a bunch of scumbags. Are you sure it's other companies though? Because that's an issue I've had before and it's actually, um, it's technically like you're not supposed to hang signs up on certain things or po put them in the yards or whatever. So yeah, with the third story thing, I know you're not supposed to use ladders, but every now and again, if you really, really gotta reach a spot, I might use a ladder. Hate to say it, I'm not telling you guys to do it. It's dangerous. But at the same time, you're not using pressure, and everyone starts somewhere, man. Where there's a will, there's a way. Getting some two-story good or clean lately. What are you charging for two-story linear foot? Yeah, Jason, I really don't do all that linear foot, square footage, and trying to get exact pricing. I've really gotten into habit. I, I found wasting too much time on estimates is a waste of time, because sometimes they don't come through, and then you just waste all this time but I should take that back. Maybe your math is quicker than and easier than mine. Um, I really just look at it. I get an idea of how long it'll take us. And I price it by how much I want to make an hour, including drive time and stuff. So usually if it's a quick two-story um, gutter cleaning, I might do like 150, 179. You know, I know you're in Canada, so I don't know if that changes... If, if that even helps you but um yeah I think that's the best I got and, you know it depends I think there was a there was a two-story house I did where we charged I think it was like 400 bucks just because it was so bad and I knew it would take probably four hours to do so I, it's like and there was like gutter those crappy gutter guards on them where we had to I told him I was like I'll rip them off but I'm not putting them back on there because they obviously, this is a good thing to tell people. If you come across people who are, uh, they want their gutters clean and they got those shitty little gutter guards on them. They're plastic and they're like little three foot sections and they're supposed to keep stuff out of the gutters, but they're calling you for gutter cleaning. I tell them, I'll take that stuff off, but I'm not putting it back on. And it's obviously not working anyway. It's not, it, your gutters are packed and they're, they're horrible gutter guards. So I'll take them off. They're not working anyway. I'll clean your gutters, get everything flushed out. It's going to be a job, though. It's going to be pretty expensive because it takes time to do all this stuff the right way. It takes time to do stuff the right way, man. What chemicals do I like and know that works? That's a kind of a broad question. Live and learn. Yeah, Nick, about the extension pole, I... I have never bought one. I actually was thinking about buying a small one, like an 18-foot one, but we'll see. I might get one. I heard they, they're horrible to work with. They're always like, 
flying all over the place and shit. So what chemicals do I like and know that works? Um, chemicals that I really only use would be gutter grenade. I, I go to a website, I go to the website Pressure Tech and I order my chemicals. I love a lemonator. I love the gutter grenade. I've been looking into getting some of the other ones they got because, man, if I had my folder with me, I'd grab you. So when you buy chemicals, they actually they actually give you a list of all the chemicals they offer and what they do. And some of them caught my eye. I was like, damn, that'd be kind of nice. So I'm actually looking to get more into wood cleaning and stuff. I really don't think it's as hard as I make it out. I've done it before and it's not bad, but I don't like, I'm not stripping it and stuff. Perfect question. I have a sample pack from Pressure Tech coming. Can't wait to see how they all work. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I almost got that uh, sample sample pack thing, but I think there was some stuff in there that I wouldn't use. But it's nice to have it in case you do need it, rather than like coming across a job and telling a customer probably two to three weeks out because then you got to order some chemicals and stuff. But yeah, dude, the gutter grenade is like awesome it's so awesome and then the eliminator are the solid ones that i use but yeah those those chemicals from pressure tech are good chemicals um but dude ox be, i hope you guys just be careful with that oxidation removal just make sure everything's wet i mean i don't want to scare you too much to the point where you don't do it because it's definitely doable but um don't like downstream it and spray it on stuff like you just kind of you kind of just dip a brush scrub it do little six to eight foot sections and then especially if the sun's shining on there you know just don't let it dry don't let it don't let anything dry keep everything wet around it but dealt with rust removal yeah i've done a little rust removal i just use like, well, rust removal on what? Like, concrete? No, I haven't. But, actually, there was, like, some rust on some vinyl and stuff, and I just I just used, like, a rust remover that I had. I don't It wasn't, like, CLR, but it was some type of rust remover. It came right off. It was just, like, a weird patch of rust. That's about all I got as far as rust removal. What other questions we got? Or do you guys got everything figured out? Now you're gonna go crush it, 2018. Do you upsell for it? Do I upsell for rust removal? I, I don't ever come across rust issues, honestly. It's, it's very rare. The only time I could see a rust issue is like, like, yeah, I don't know. I really don't come across rust problems. You know, maybe in your area you come across rust issues. But yeah, hell yeah, I'd upsell for it. Yeah, there's, dude, I, I feel like, kind of like soap is soap, rust remover is rust remover. Rust, there's, rust remover is pretty cool. A lot of that stuff works. Gutter grenade will screw some shit up, question mark. Yeah, it's like a, it's oxidation removal, so it's kind of like a stripper. And like, yeah, you could really F some shit up if you, uh, if you let that shit dry. You don't want to. You don't want to let it dry. You don't want to like poorly rinse it off. Like you want to. You want to apply it when on something wet. So like wet the gutter, apply it with like I use a brush, like a green brush, bristle brush. And I dip it in a bucket. So I put a little bit of gutter grenade in a five-gallon bucket, and then a little bit of water. So I got like this much solution at the bottom of a bucket. I just dip it in there, scrub it on the gutter. Kind of let it sit for a second. Black stripes are gone. Rinse it off, and then it actually makes a badass before and after picture. Cause then you can like right next. You're right next to all this oxidation, and it's like completely clean. And then there's still the stripes. So then, so good to take a picture right there and market it. Hard water here in New York. Yeah. Do you have like a TDS meter? I'm curious what you guys TDS readings are. Out here, it's like between three and four hundred. Yeah, like Florida, they don't got hard water. It's like thirty or forty on the TDS meter. It's like, damn, you could damn near clean the windows with that water. Oh, 
I've been live for a hundred minutes. Unreal. How do you offer your services to business owners? I'm having difficulties getting commercial jobs. I actually kind of touched on this in the in the um, beginning of this video. So you're going to have to just rewind and watch it all over again. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, no problem, Nick. Um, I just wish people would do this for me when I started. Like, it's there's so much money in the world to be made, man. There's so much. For people to be, like, envious and greedy of information is just so bogus. It's ridiculous. So... If you're, if people are out there willing to learn, and willing to listen to advice, I would love to help out. Um, how do you offer your service to business owners? I'm having difficulties getting commercial jobs. So there's a, there's a lot of different ways, man. But um, it depends on how big commercial jobs you're talking, I guess. This is a, this is a kind of going to be a long-winded question. I feel like. <laughs> Thanks, Cody. I wish you were my neighbor too, man. Be better than all these crackheads running around. No offense if anyone's a crackhead on here. Um. So businesses, some. Okay, window cleaning, for instance. Are you talking about like small, small window cleaning places or like big places? storefronts oh man that's really just just being smooth with your talking I guess storefronts really I don't think they're too hard to get you kind of have to have tough skin and uh, just be able to take a bunch of nose but these are solid for storefronts take a little get a business card made up I know everything's backwards so it's kind of hard hard to read but oh, whatever so it's I got check boxes it says interior and exterior and then exterior what does it say gutter interior and exterior exterior house wash and gutters I never do estimates it's not it's definitely backwards maybe it's backwards for me weird that's really weird um, I'll go, I'll, I'll do my script. I haven't done it in a while. I'll do my script. <sighs> oh, this is awkward. I forgot my script. So I, I would go, I would go into storefronts and it helps when you, when you get a store, when you get a storefront, how to win friends and influence people. It's when you um it helps when you get a storefront next like in a strip when you get a store kind of play off of that keep keep going with those with those ones in that area um and don't take one no as a as a as a definite no keep going back in there and keep trying um but there's there's a few different ways but i'd go in with a script and just be like hey um my name's john i own a local window cleaning business um, we're kind of just trying to expand in this area, and I'd love to get you on board. Um, I went ahead and wrote up a quote for you. It's on the back of this business card here. and Hand it to him. And uh, that price is for just the exterior. Um, or you could do that price is just is for inside and out. Um, and then you can, if you really want to be a boss or a player about it. Well, actually, I would I would honestly go in. Well, no, I'll, I'll keep rolling with this. If you really want to be a player about it, you could be like, um, we really would love to get you on board. Um, we're trying to expand more right in this exact area. It would be, it'd be great to get you on the team. Um, and just kind of as a, kind of as a thank you and welcome, I'd love to offer this first window cleaning for free. If we get you on a scheduled, 
uh, bi-weekly cleaning or, or scheduled monthly cleaning. Boom! Hook, line, sinker. Sure! Clean the shit out of them windows, and then I'll never call you again. No, they won't do that. But you can you can think of creative ways. I, I never did the free thing because I found I found the first cleaning was the hardest because they were so dirty. And I sold myself kind of short. <laughs> Cody said yes they will. Um, I sold myself kind of short. I was doing it cheap. I was just so desperate to try to build a name and look busy and like stuff, but man. Storefront window cleaning took a toll on me. I like, I was like questioning if this shit was really for me because I hated it. But I don't think my head was fully in the game either because I, I had the let, you don't have the, it's just everything's on you. So you don't have to like wake up and go to work, you know? And like if you're not feeling it, then you're not feeling it. And you can just blow things off and that's not cool. Because maybe you leave it kind of open. Maybe you don't have them in a perfect schedule like you said like sometime this week so then you kind of procrastinate it yourself in your head and then before you know it the week's over and then you're like damn this is awkward now I have to go in there and explain to them or try to you know some main companies offer the second cleaning free that's I don't know if I'd do that but it's, it's, an, it's an idea um, played to the left by the dry cleaners yeah, dry cleaning, <laughs> you'll, you'll like find out, you'll like uh, learn which stores are cheapskates and they suck. You know, like dry cleaners suck, nail salons suck, what else sucks? There's just some people that don't like to pay. What's going on with the employee issue? You guys reach an agreement? One thing I've been worried about, finding someone useful and able to trust. Yeah, I know. That guy... I'm hesitant to go in on that on, in on that topic too much because I worry he will like watch my YouTube videos and, but then again he's like so what it's not like illegal to talk about an issue um is this thing on sorry okay so um, yeah, he left. I can go on in on it a little bit. He left um, Friday. I told him I would give him a, a huge raise if he was trained well enough to where I didn't have to be there. And I'm talking he knew my scripts. He knew what to say to the customers from beginning to end. He knew the process of house washing and stuff. And I said my goal was to have this happen by May. It didn't happen. It just didn't happen. It, I mean, it was there was snow on the ground like a week or two ago. We didn't even start working until damn near end of April. But he held onto that little part of the conversation. And when I didn't fulfill my promise, walked. And it was it was bogus because he's a friend of mine. So he uh, and he knew we're like swamped, busy. So he's. He was he was being manipulative. He was like, "You said it, so I'm walking. If you don't pay it, meh, 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 meh." And it's like, I don't want people like that on my team. So, I told, I made it very clear, I want to. He was trying to go from 15 an hour to 20 an hour, and I said, "I, I, I would love to pay you that if I don't have to be in the field at all, but I can't. If I'm still in the field, I financially cannot afford that. That's insane. I can't." I don't, I'm barely making, I don't even think I'm making, well, yeah, I am. Am I? He'd be making about what I'm making if that was the, it wouldn't make any sense. It wouldn't make any sense whatsoever to do that. So, he's just got a shit attitude. He's always had a shit attitude. And I don't think I would have ever been able to train him how to talk to customers and stuff the way that I do. I really don't so it's all right good riddance I'm, I'm it's not gonna be a big deal I'm gonna find other people to work for me and we'll just take this hurdle on 
so I I actually um, interviewed some this uh, Mexican guy today he said he had five years experience cleaning windows and I had him show me how to clean a window and he didn't he didn't clean it like a five-year win veteran window cleaner but we'll see he, he at least cleaned it and knew how to detail it um, yeah and then so we're out there I was interviewing him and then I kind of walked walked him back towards his car where he parked his wife was waiting in the car he introduced me to his wife and then some uh, some black dude walks right through my yard towards us like past us and I was like He's like, you all right? He's like, yeah, I was just cutting through. And I was like, oh, this is my yard. Can you not do that again? He's like, yeah, my bad. And so I said bye to the Mexican guy and his wife, not really thinking much about it. Walked to the, walked to the front, the front of my house to my, um, to my car parked in the street, grabbing something out the front of my car. And this black car pulls up in front of my car. Well, not in front, but across the street from my car and who hops out of the back of the car? The black dude. And the people that drive away are some straight up drug addict looking people. And I was like, hey man, you do that bullshit around my house again, it's over with. You better not be, you know, how about not be so fucking obvious doing that shit? And he just like ignored me and walked away, but. Yeah, man, I, it's, that's what I mean. I gotta make it, I gotta get out of, get out of this town one day with a bed set up in the bed with a cover over it I wanted to buy a Chevy Colorado do you think I get this set up why do you gotta have the cover on it though you could take the cover off, but maybe you could leave the cover on, but I, the only problem I see is the hose reels being an issue. And then do you really want to run a power washer like in an enclosed area? I know guys with vans do it, but they have the power washer at the end of the van, like the doors, so it still gets ventilation. Oh, crackheads. Yeah. Yeah, man, them damn crackheads, man. They get your ass. I worry about my shit sitting out like that, but I back it up in my driveway. And uh, everything's bolted down, so I still I unload all my loose stuff. Yeah, man, that's a good point. We should talk about that, man. How to start a power washing business if you're surrounded by crackheads? Hmm. No one seems to talk about that. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I'm thinking about getting some surveillance around my house or something. Yeah, you know what's funny? I should show y'all my street. It's not like a shitty... I don't live in, like, the ghetto. But, I mean, I'm not, like, in a ritzy neighborhood. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, I got everything bolted down, and there's no way they're getting to it, really, unless they uh, cut it, cut the damn thing out. But I was gonna say, there's these, there's these people down the street, and I, I was, I'm like, I'm like Nancy Drew. They, they have this green pickup truck, and then there's these people at the Walmart in town that stand in front of Walmart with these homeless signs, and. Uh, I noticed one day there was this green pickup truck kind of parked near where they were standing. And then I noticed another day they were getting into the truck and I put it all together. They, the people down the street are the guys, are the people that claim to be homeless standing in front of Walmart with a homeless sign. And I got all my equipment sitting on the back of my truck. What's to stop them from stealing all my shit? Oh my God. I would be devastated if that, if that happened. That would be such a huge setback. I just like woke up one day and all my shit was gone. I'd cry. And then I'd go get a nine to five. I'd just be like, this is my life.
So, it's not cheap. I can't have a pistol. That's one thing y'all know about me. I am a, I am a, a damn, do I want to say that? Yeah, a pistol would be nice. I'll just hit him with the. I'll hit him with the power washer. With the power washer pistol grip. A kill switch on the Chevy. So what, when they drive off with it, I can just like turn it off from my phone? And a little tracker and everything? It's not a bad idea. No, it doesn't. That garage is... <laughs> that garage is a joke. It's a small garage. It's either... I, for... I tried it. I think it's... I think it's too short and it's not wide enough for my truck to fit in. Got a bid for a retirement home, windows outside only, 426 panes and frames, single story. Do you charge the same as residential? Uh, maybe a little cheaper. It's funny, I um I would four dollars a pain residential. I would three dollars a pain for that commercial. Is what I would do. So that's exactly what I do for residential. I do four to. What I do is I. So. Most of the time I can do my estimates by like Google Maps or something. But sometimes I'll come across a house where they don't pop up on Google Maps or there's a big dumbass tree in the front yard and you can't see the house at all. So I drive out there and I look at it. I count the windows up and I count it up and the, the panes. And I times it by four. And whatever that price is, I then look at my price brackets. So I have a bracket for large homes, medium homes, and small homes. And I have a price for basic, deluxe, and premium. And so, say like I add up the panes and it comes up to $88. It's a small home, $4 a pane, it comes with like $88. Then they would fall in my small home package because a small for a small home window cleaning package is eighty nine dollars to clean. But then another thing I've I've learned I've done this is a good tip right here. So I did the package and I think almost every window cleaner that I know of includes screen cleaning in their packages. I stopped doing that. I I have included in my estimates that there is an upcharge of three dollars per screen clean, and it's nice. It's that it's that extra boost I need. It it added because that screen cleaning is like. That's where my profit comes in. It's beautiful. It's the best decision I ever made. The bed's actually holding up fine. The truck's falling apart, though. If I go full-time with my business, how would you recommend I survive the slow season? Save up or get a 9-to-5? It depends. You can try saving, but if all else fails, get a 9-to-5. I think, as an entrepreneur, one thing I've realized is... Getting a job is not hard at all. If you have an entrepreneur mindset, every employer wants you because there's so many like drone like MFers out there that just are like, eh, I'm just doing this and I want to get, I'm going to get a certain amount an hour and this is my life and I hate my life. Whereas entrepreneurs do what they got to do because they know there's so much better for them in life. Like, Everyone here knows there's a better life for themselves than right now. So you'll go into work. If you have to get a nine to five to make ends meet for a small period of time, you're going to work with a badass, happy, positive attitude because you know it's only temporary. Whereas the next motherfucker is going to hate his life because he thinks this is his whole life and he doesn't, he hasn't seen the vision yet. So if you got to get a nine to five, it ain't the end of the world, man. You'll figure it out. But, uh, definitely gonna take some risks if you you, you want to 
if you want to go go full time you know what i mean but yeah well, actually my bed's fine what's weird is there's little spots like my rocker panels are shot quad, uh, cab corners are shot and now the the paint's like chipping around the wheel wells where the hoses kind of ding on it and stuff hits it and now the the wheel wells are starting to rust it sucks i hate rust i hate it so much so yeah jason smith i've been getting some large commercial places i got a huge high school that was it was like 1700 panes of glass or something and then there was a huge eye surgical dentist or it was eye an eye surgery institute and they called me wanting an emergency window cleaning